Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. Fiesta favorites as far as the eye can see. All this food made for a party, but is it made and served according to code? How Metro Health is making sure the food we love to eat this time of year is safe for us to eat. And the city comes to the table with its best and final offer, they say, to buy out a downtown business. The money the owner turned down. And what's next in this legal battle over his bar? Celebrating Fiesta without getting sick. Nobody wants that. What's a party for some people is another day's work for Metro Health, though, as staff works to make sure that vendors are up to code. The night team's John Paul Barajas takes us inside that effort to keep Fiesta goers safe and healthy. I'm going to fix it up real good. Okay. <laughs> Oh, tacos. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Chicken, beef, fajita, anything. I have the chicken gordita, uh, everything in it, and it's delicious. Oh, the amazing food. It's just one of the many reasons Fiesta brings in people from all over the country. Uh, the tortillas here are a little bit better than Minneapolis. Oh, yeah, they're homemade here, man. Yeah, <laughs> commercial everything up there. But as important as the food is, making sure everything is up to code is equally as important. Well, we don't want anyone getting sick. We don't want any people visiting the great city of San Antonio getting sick. Metro Health took us with them as they made sure the food being served is safe to eat. Hi guys, how's it going? That includes checking that everyone in the food prep area has gloves, hats, or hair nets, and that food is being kept at the right temperature. It has a lot of ice. A lot of ice, so they're keeping it at 41 or below, right? Yes, yes. awesome. Keep it at 41 or below and just frequently adding ice. Inspectors are also making sure no one gets any uncooked items either. Another must, hand washing. Yeah. And sanitation stations. Well, that's perfect. That's about 100 ppm. But if something's not right, they correct it. For this one, you guys really want 50 to 100 ppm, so you guys are gonna have to add a bit more bleach. Okay, and that's what we're looking for. We want that purple for 50 to 100 ppm. If the vendor can't fix the issue in a timely manner, they might lose their approved permits to ensure everyone leaves safe and without an upset stomach. You even know I do because some say I eat too much, but. <laughs> Uh, that's the only reason anybody should leave Fiesta in pain. It's because they had way too much of all the delicious food they have to offer. I almost fell victim to that myself, but I stopped myself with a little bit of self-control. Now, behind me at Market Square, it is packed right now. Everybody's having a great time. You got to love live music. They're jamming out on the stage. As for all the food that I had today, it was absolutely delicious. I had no issues with it. But if you see something that is concerning, you are encouraged to call 311 and report it. Metro Health officials will also be out at Fiesta events, making sure all the food is up to code. At Market Square, John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. That looks like a Friday night at Fiesta. Some Fiesta goers got a taste of New Orleans tonight at the Sunken Garden Theater. This three day event kicked off tonight with everything from New Orleans style food to music. This is the 36th year for this popular event put on by the San Antonio Zulu Association. If you missed out tonight, still opportunities. You can check out a taste of New Orleans tomorrow from noon to 11 p.m. We're going to stick with this food theme for now, proving that food is such a big part of this citywide party with a purpose. Tonight kicked off Oyster Bake at St. Mary's University. The night team's Patty Santos takes us to that campus as this event has been underway for more than a century now with the goal of helping families while alumni help carry the torch for students. Hello everyone, this is Fiesta 107 Oyster Bake and we are ready to open the gates. Let everyone in. Let the oyster baking begin. A 1916 tradition has turned into a family reunion for Radler alumni at St. Mary's University. It was just a camaraderie of, of friends and Marinus brothers getting together, and all of a sudden it just built on from that uh, awarding scholarships to St. Mary's alumni students. St. Mary's board member Joel Vela and his family volunteer each year. But they also love how a two-day event can help raise $500,000 in scholarships and other university programs. Uh, we have several uh, family members that have been with us maybe 15 plus years and they're all alumni. So it's a gift that keeps on giving. 
grandparents, parents, and children, all alumni returning for a party with a purpose. I am an alum. I graduated in 2002. Um, I am a long history of St. Mary's graduates from my parents to my younger sister, and we have We're fellow alum. alum. have to be an alumni to join the fiesta fun and enjoy the oysters raw baked or straight up but if it's not your thing no worries there's also brisket tacos and drinks and of course the chicken on a stick okay, patty santos case at 12 news oyster bake continues tomorrow at saint mary's and the gates there open at noon how about Battle of Flowers? Do you have plans for the parade yet? You can come join us at the KSAT Insider Parade Viewing Party. You can get your tickets and watch the parade from above in the grandstands. You'll get tacos from Las Palapas, access to private restrooms, that's key. Plus, you get to hang out with the KSAT crew. Get your tickets, head to KSAT.com, sign up to be a KSAT Insider, and that's where you can find all of this information. Better yet, scan this QR code you see right here on your screen. That will take you to the Fiesta section of KSAT.com for a full list of event tickets and schedules and all important parking information. Well, this time last night, so many of us were getting ready for another wave of heavy rain and strong winds. As forecasted, severe weather moved in, leaving behind a lot of water and a lot of damage in some areas, especially in Comal County. The National Weather Service confirming today that a weak EF0 tornado touched down near the Canyon Lake area. It hit just next to FM 2673, traveled a path that stretched about three miles. People living there woke up to find twisted trees, signs bent over, downed power lines. The wind even peeled back a roof. But a lot of people we talked to today told us they are glad things weren't worse. Just came right in here, right past that house up up there, and just just knocked everything down. Lucky nobody got hurt. That's the amazing part because it's it's pretty devastating as you can see. The National Weather Service estimated this tornado had roughly 85 mile an hour winds. Property owners say it is going to take a while to clean up this mess. In San Antonio, a mess, but not caused by a tornado. A massive tree toppled over in Brackenridge Park during those storms last night. The San Antonio Parks and Recreation Department says the pecan tree was already blocked off from public access. It was previously marked for removal from the park as part of the park's phase one bond project. The city now says that tree will be removed once it can be done safely. Power outages, another issue in last night's storms, and those problems lingered into this evening for some people. At one point, some 45,000 CPS Energy customers were without power. Now, right now, we have checked it out just before this newscast began. The number of outages down to fewer than 200 customers. CPS says more than 70 downed wires were reported all around the service area. So let's get to Adam Kasky right now with the latest on the forecast. Adam, that tornado from some of the people we talked to out there, they said it was kind of amazing how precise yeah. the path was. Yeah, it wasn't very wide, but it was this narrow path of exactly three miles from Gallagher Drive near Lakeside Golf Club southeastward, crossing over Texas Hill Country Trail and ending around FM 2722. This is on that southern side of Canyon Lake near Startsville. <clears throat> it lasted from 1040 p.m. to 1044, so it was four minutes with maximum winds estimated to be 85 miles per hour. Tomorrow morning, beautiful start to the day. We're going to be in the 50s. 53 in Bandera, Lost Maples 55, along with Canyon Lake 55 in the morning, 57 in San Antonio, Poteet and Pleasanton 59. We're going to talk more about the weekend because we do have big changes between Saturday and Sunday. We've got more rain to talk about and some temperature whiplash. We'll talk about how much cooler it's going to get in just a bit. And of course, look ahead, River Parade, Battle of Flowers. The latest on that in just a bit, Myra. Yeah, we got a lot to look forward to. Thanks, Adam. Now for a look at some of today's big headlines in your night beat news flash. The U.S. Supreme Court rules the abortion pill will remain available while legal challenges play out. That ruling rejects the decision of a federal court or a federal judge rather in Amarillo to suspend the FDA's approval of Mifepristone. This drug is used in the majority of abortions. Some legal analysts say the high court's decision almost certainly leaves access to Mifepristone unchanged, at least into next year. 
A driver convicted in a deadly hit and run is now headed to prison. Victor Mossmeyer was sentenced to 10 years today. Mossmeyer hit Shane Fuel in Southeast Bear County in June of 2021. Investigators say he did not stop and he did not call 911. Police say they found Mossmeyer's side mirror and antenna at that scene. A local bar owner rejects a nearly $5.3 million offer from the city to buy his property near the Alamo. Victor Contu owns Moses Rose's hideout on East Houston and says the offer isn't good enough. Contu's business is in the path of the new Alamo Museum that's planned. The city says this $5.26 million offer is its best and final offer. This has been a legal battle for months. The Alamo Trust says that Contu has until May 8th to accept the offer before the city begins imminent domain proceedings. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Straight ahead here on the Night Beat tonight, did you get a letter for jury duty next week? Why well, you want to pay close attention to the location because of Fiesta. And if last night's storms caught you unprepared for an emergency or power outages, why this weekend is a great time to get ready for emergencies and save some money at the same time. Plus, lawmakers in Austin could soon be the ones stripping Texas professors of any hope of making tenure. Why a ban on that practice is being proposed when the night beat continues. It is often used as a recruiting tool to help attract top tier professors and instructors tenure at Texas universities and colleges, but it could soon be banned altogether. Republican State Senator Brandon Creighton authored the bill proposing this ban. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick is supporting it. The measure gained traction after the University of Texas Faculty Council passed a resolution affirming teachers' rights to teach critical race theory. Republicans approved a ban on CRT in public schools last year. Patrick is calling for a ban on granting Texas professors tenure beginning in January. Last night's storms were a reminder to make sure that you have the supplies you need in case of an emergency. Think flashlights and batteries. Well, you can stock up this weekend tax-free. This weekend is the statewide tax-free weekend for certain emergency items. That includes things like batteries, emergency ladders, first aid kits, portable generators as well. The sales tax holiday runs through midnight this Monday, April 24th. You can find a full list of qualifying items on KSAT.com. Did you know that suspending jury trials in Bear County is also a fiesta tradition? Next week, Bear County courts are still conducting hearings, but there will not be any new trials starting for the entire week because of fiesta. Some fiesta events used to be held around the Bear County courthouse, and it was tough for people to find parking and maneuver traffic and construction. That said, some people will still get jury summons for next week. If that's you, look at it closely. Here's why. You get a summons to report next week to uh, jury duty. That is probably your precinct that is requesting you, and they are holding uh, jury trials. Also remember, you must now report in person for jury duty, no longer on Zoom. If you have questions or issues with your jury summons, you can go to bear.org slash jury for more information. Look outside with live cam after those storms last night. We've got more rain to talk about in the future, but this weekend's gonna be a little bit split, Adam. Yeah, and let's put it this way. If you want to get outside, Saturday is your day. Tomorrow is the day to get outside. Saturday, Sunny, comfortable, rainy and cool on Sunday with a few more storm chances uh, next week as well. So let's take a look at our rain chances right off the bat. Tomorrow, 10% and that's basically after sunset. We'll be on the lookout for some thunder showers. Otherwise, Sunday, that's the day. More numerous and widespread rain coming and going across South Central Texas throughout the day. And then notice even on Monday, 30% and then through the rest of the week, we've got about 20 to 30% chance. But I do think the rain chances basically get erased by Friday and Saturday of next week. Let's get right to our future cast and talk about this weekend. Tomorrow, a lot of sunshine. I'm fast forwarding to 7 p.m. on the future cast. After sunset, we'll be on the lookout for some thunderstorms starting in the hill country and then maybe even along the Rio Grande as well. I think in San Antonio, we'll be okay. We're not anticipating any storms until we get later on into Sunday night, especially early Saturday morning or 
Saturday night and into early Sunday morning. You know, you know what I mean? Scattered areas of rain developing a few embedded thunderstorms. It's not going to be continuous on Sunday. It'll be intermittent, so this activity is going to come and go. It's not going to be raining everywhere at the same time, but it should be really good coverage across South and Central Texas. So we gave it that 70% chance and we could see a quick inch or so in some areas, especially the neighborhoods that get some of the heavier showers. You could get a quick inch of rain throughout the day on Sunday. Let's talk temperatures and dew points. 69 degrees dew point of 58. So a lack of mugginess out there. We don't have the thick humidity, at least here in most of San Antonio. You get just south of town and dew points rise a bit. We're right on the edge of this boundary that's been drifting overhead. So lack of humidity in the hill country, but you get to Pleasanton, Gonzales, Kennedy, you still have that humidity in the air and then very dry off to the west and northwest. I think all of us will feel a lack of mugginess a good portion of the day tomorrow, but especially Sunday and Monday. As for temperatures, we made it to 90 degrees out west, 91 for high temperatures closer to the closer to the border. Right now we're there in the 70s there. We're in the 60s to near 70, 71 Port SA, Converse at 65, Canyon Lake and Bulverde at 67. And we'll start the day tomorrow at 57 degrees, so dropping about 10 degrees between now and sunrise tomorrow. Mostly sunny through the day, not overly humid, 81 the high temperature, the southeasterly wind at 10 to 15. Notice that at 9 o'clock after sunset, we're looking for some of those thunder showers, especially in the hill country tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. But all in all, we'll be in the low to mid 80s. I mean, we're talking 84 in Divine tomorrow, 83 Floresville, but just a hair shy of 80, Bernie and Bulverde high of 79. Things change completely Sunday. We'll be in the 60s all day long with that rain. 67 the high temperature, uh, intermittent showers, a few rumbles of thunder. Monday, not much warmer at 70. The River Parade can't rule out a few passing showers, but look at Friday, Battle of Flowers. Sunny, 80, maybe not even that humid. How about that? For Mind Fiesta? blowing. I know. Thank you, Adam. Let's turn to sports now with Larry. We're talking Brahmas, and this is winter go home for them? Pretty much, but they also need some help to get into the playoffs. So we've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks. Brahmas have to win, but Heinz Ward says it's even bigger than that. Plus, SAFC is looking to bounce back. Coming up. Week 10 in the XFL is upon us, and the San Antonio Brahmas need to win to get in. This afternoon, the Brahmas held a walkthrough at Bernie ISD Stadium, home of the Greyhounds and the champion Chargers. At 3-6, and six, it all comes down to the final week of the regular season for the Brahmas. They have to beat D.C. tomorrow afternoon at the Dome and have Houston beat Arlington on Sunday to advance to the second season. This is a big game, not just for us as a team overall but for a lot of our players individually you know they want to uh, if you have dreams and aspiration of playing at the next level all the scouts are going to be looking at this game you know get an opportunity to play uh, the best team in the league um, and also you know from they want to see if you improve from week one to week ten the Brahmas ate lunch and Bernie today met some veterans and benefit of the Purple Heart Project San Antonio FC is ready to host Phoenix Rising FC tomorrow night, 7.30 at Toyota Field while looking to extend the team's current 21-match unbeaten streak at home. The champs lost on Saturday 1-0 to Louisville City FC, ending their unbeaten streak at 16 matches dating back to last season. Now it's all about following the game plan and getting back into the win column. Leaves a, a bitter taste in our mouth. Uh, the players were disappointed. Um, and. The disappointment comes from what we didn't do versus what Louisville did. So that, that's, that's when it's tough to swallow a defeat. Uh, but nonetheless, a defeat is a defeat. They all hurt, uh, but you have to have a short-term memory. You need to put it behind you, learn from it, we grow from it, and hopefully we don't repeat the mistakes again. Check out the limited edition Champions Kit the team released yesterday. The kit is available at the Soccer Factory or online at safcfanshop.com. 
Had a great District 28-6A battle this afternoon on the Diamond at Northeast Sports Park. Reagan playing Churchill. Rattlers break out the bats in the top of the third. Caden Roy drills one deep to right over the in, over the fielder's head and off the wall. Brendan Greer scores part of a six-run inning as Reagan builds a commanding 9-2 lead. But the Chargers chip away. Sammy Horvath knocks a base hit in the left. Eric Moore comes home. Churchill scores five straight runs to make it a two-run game heading into the seventh. But the Rattlers pull away. Roy strikes again, this time dropping a base hit into center. Keegan Baldwin scores and Reagan pulls away to win it 11 to 7. The other night was a huge emotional game. Went nine innings with those guys and then got to bounce back and come play these guys for another big game. And it'll be just like playoffs. Seven playoffs is back to back days. It's even more quick of a turnaround. Reagan is now 13 and 1 in district and will next face Roosevelt on Tuesday night. Two playoff teams squaring off at the head of Sports Complex tonight. McCollum taking on South Sand. The Bobcats in total control of this one. They score 10 runs in the first four innings, and senior Jacob Sanchez is dealing on the mound. He only needs 98 pitches to go the distance and closes with six straight shutout innings. South Sand picks up a big win in 28 5A play, 10 to 3. A Chicago Cubs pitcher is almost Mr. Perfect after the break. Dribbler, third base side, tough play. Oh, oh, don't you dare. oh no. Come on. Oh man, that collision ended a perfect game. No hitter for Cubs pitcher Drew Smiley in the top of the eighth inning today. He went seven and two thirds, allowing one hit with 10 Ks, and the Cubbies rolled the Dodgers 13 to nothing. Astros at the Braves tonight, top of the seventh inning. Astros down one when Mauricio Dubon sends a shot to deep right center field to the wall. That scores Jake Myers from first base, and this game is tied at four after that RBI double. Top of the eighth inning, same score. Runner on for Jordan Alvarez, and he crushes a two run homer. Four 105 feet, giving the Astros the lead for good, and Houston takes it by a final of 6-4, to four, and the Rangers fall to the Athletics today, 5-4. to four. In Texas League Baseball, you have the Missions defeating the Hooks, 6-5 to five in 10 innings. How about that? How about that? You know, I threw out the first pitch once at a Corpus Christi Hooks game. Yeah, right down the middle? Right down the middle. I knew it. Pretty sure I made it to home base. <laughs> home plate? Home plate. <laughs> I we'll think you, right back. you must have bounced it. I you must have bounced it. It's, I didn't bounce it. Okay. I know that. Okay. I didn't bounce it. We'll be right back. All right. Take a look at this temperature trend. We'll be in the low 80s tomorrow, then 60s on Sunday, Monday, right near 70 degrees. So big, big temperature shift when you compare today and tomorrow to what we're going to have Sunday and Monday. And by the way, Sunday looking rather damp with intermittent showers. All right, thanks, Adam. From all of us here at KSAT's uh, home base, have a good night. <laughs>